Minnesota Golden Gopher football is in a healthy place after back-to-back -back nine win years and four straight bowl wins. And even with some Gopher legends graduating, P.J. Flex says this team has a chance to rival that 2019 team as the most talented that he's had here in Minneapolis. And today we get our first look at the Gophers. Welcome to Minnesota Spring Football on Big Ten Network inside of the Larson Performance Center where it's the annual Maroon Gold game. We're, we're glad you're with us with former Gopher Brock Vereen, Connor Onion, Emily Eman here in just a few minutes. Now, yeah, very healthy plays for Minnesota football with nine wins last year. They won the Pinstripe Bowl, and they're consistently getting guys to the NFL. The floor has been elevated. What is expected out of Minnesota year to year has been raised. Four or five draft picks consistently, nine win seasons back to back, not too far removed from an 11 win season. And yet, Connor, there's still plenty of meat left on the bone, right? Fans are happy with competing for Big Ten West championships year after year. Now it's time to win one. Now he'll have to do it with some new faces, but they're more than capable. And they feel like because of the quarterback that they have replacing Tanner Morgan, they can do that. We got to see a little bit in the bowl game last year. Of course, that was the sayonara to Bo Ibrahim, the all-time leading rusher in Minnesota history. It was a great day for Daniel Jackson. This was one of two touchdown catches. And then, of course, the defense showed up, too. The MVP of the day, safety Coleman Bryson, a 70-yard pick six. What a day for him. Yeah, that was the first ever pick six in a bowl game in Minnesota history. And then it was Jackson capping it off in the Gatorade bath for P.J. Fleck, who's now 4-0 and in bowl games since he took over the Gopher program. So Tanner Morgan is gone. He set the record for most wins as a quarterback in Minnesota history. But Ethan Kaliakmanis Kali is the guy that they feel like can lead them to the place that you said they could go. This is not hyperbole, Connor. He has so much excitement about him. I would say the expectation for him is going to rival any quarterback that has ever played for this program. He has an absolute cannon attached to his arm. He can make any throw, any throw imaginable, and yet he can still get it done with his legs. They'll run him a little bit, but I promise you they are going to rely on that arm a lot more than recent Gopher quarterbacks. And you got a glimpse of it in that Wisconsin game. He hit Lemecki Brockington for the 45-yard slant. That ended up being the game-winning score. So in some big spots on the road at Penn State, on the road at Wisconsin, they threw the ball a lot, and maybe this could be a changing identity for a Minnesota offense. It certainly will. I mean, look at how good he did being thrown into the fire. Of course, he jumped in when Tanner Morgan went down with injury. Now he has an entire offseason of one reps, an entire offseason of work. He is going to be the real deal. I am so excited for him. Well, P.J. Flex said, don't get it twisted. We will always be a downhill running team. This isn't going to become air raid, but it could be the closest it's ever been to 50-50 as far as the play calling. I'm going to call it 58% run. This is Minnesota after all, but that ball is going to the air. So going inside that 60% threshold for the first time in P.J. Flex time, maybe. Let's introduce you to the third member of our crew, Emily Eman. She's with P.J. Flex. Coach, Today, you get to see some younger guys step up in a game situation. What's the biggest thing you want to see from them today? Uh, just improvement, you know, the pressure of the situation in a spring game. And, uh, you know, it kind of has a feel of the old Metrodome here today. So uh, it'll be fun for them, though. We got a lot of really inexperienced players that are going to get a lot of experience. Had, had a great spring. Now they just got to put it all together today. Well, quarterback Ethan Kaliak Manis, you've talked about how great he can be. What's the biggest thing you want to see from him today leading this team? Well, just to have fun and be consistent, you know, show the things he's improved in the spring. You know, I mean, we're, we took our whole team and divided it in half, so it's not like you have ones, twos, and threes. And uh, I just want to see consistency. I want to see leadership. And he's taken a bunch of strides as well as Cole in the spring. In terms of position battles, you've talked about how spring, you don't win the job, but you set up to win the job. What's one position group you're really looking at today? Well, running back position should be really fun to watch. You know, uh, it, we're pretty deep there with a lot of young talent. Um, kind of interested. I'm, I'm excited to see who emerges from that group today. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun as we get into the, the summer. And we got all the families here for most of the guys. How special is this for them? Yeah, former players, parents. We got a bunch of recruits here too. This is really cool. We had a big family night last night with all of our players, parents, and it was just really cool to break bread with them. And uh, I know they're really excited to watch their sons, that's for sure. Coach, thank you so much. We have more coming up from Minneapolis after the break. Spring football on the Big Ten Network is presented by the USFL. The USFL season continues tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Fox. A busy weekend in Minneapolis, including watching a little USFL tonight. 
And you've got Big Ten guys all over the USFL this year. They're all over the place. Stevie Scott was one heck of a running back. That's a guy who had some burst. Patty Fisher, you will hear Coach Pat Fitzgerald talk on and on and on about the impact that he made there. And coming from a former linebacker, that's some high praise. So back inside at the Larson Performance Center, we are inside today. It was uh, originally scheduled to be outdoors at the stadium, but a little snow greeted us as we got into town yesterday. So we are inside, and this is what we're doing today. We've got the calisthenics, stretching, some individual drills to take you through the first 30 minutes, and then we'll play an actual game. You'll get the maroon against the gold team and play some real football for a while with a little wrinkle at the bottom. Each team gets one flag <laughs> per game. Those are not challenge flags. You know Coach Fleck has to throw in a little wrinkle in there. Now, I am excited just for four quarters of traditional football. Kind of hard to find nowadays the way that the spring game format has gone, but this is as close to a game as we're going to get. So that's what we know will happen, of course, with what happens last year. We might be in for a surprise. Who knows what's going on? Oh, there's today. always surprises, Connor. You know this. Right, right. Well, hey, let's let's uh, talk defense. First of all, the priority on this defensive line is get more pass rush. Minnesota finished 13th in the Big Ten in sacks last year. And it's just not good enough. And defensive coordinator Joe Rossi will be the first one to tell you that. There is no concern about the defensive backs on this team, but what helps them out the most is the pass rush. They've still been looking for that Boye Mafe replacement. Of course, he's a, he is now a member of the Seattle Seahawks, but they need somebody who can consistently get after the passer, which leads to figuring out the secondary. You got Justin Wally, you got Tyler Newbin, you got to find two other guys. Well, they have one of the youngest defensive line coaches in the country, one of the youngest coaches, period, in the country. Winston D. Latibo Dare is 25 years old. <laughs> and I'm telling you something right now, he might be a head coach before he's 30. That is the trajectory that he's on. Played here for five seasons at Minnesota, three of them under Fleck. Goes on immediately when he graduates to be a GA at Charlotte. Then works for Mario Cristobal when he was at Oregon as a member of the defensive line. Then to Akron. Now he's here. And uh, if they need an extra body, it looks like he can still play. That guy's ready to roll. Well, you said it. He played the position, and he's the size of these guys, so he can bang with them a little bit. And uh, the guys that he's working with, yes, they turn over some guys, especially Thomas Rush, an all-Big Ten player at that rush position, but they've got a, a guy in Jalen Logan Redding that's taken over that defensive line room in the spring. And his strength is his strength, meaning he is the strongest guy on the field at all times. He is a just an absolute load that you have to deal with. But they need a little fast twitch out there, right? Jalen Logan Redding does his job, but if you can counteract him with a fast twitch guy who can bend the edge, man, they could be cooking. And so that's what they've got going up front. Again, that was the priority. P.J. Flex stated it with the defense overall, get more pass rush. So it's up to those guys. Well, in the secondary, big question around here in Minnesota is, who's that second corner opposite of Justin Wally? Well, we know that Justin Wally is the first one, right? He will be following his buddy Terrell Smith to the NFL, if not at the end of this year, at the end of next year. But the thing about being a shutdown corner is you can be easily avoided. So they got to find out, is it going to be Miles Fleming? Is it going to be Tariq Watson, Rylan Kelly? It could be a safety who maybe slides out the corner. The fact is you have to have two for it to be successful. The two defensive backs likely to be picked from Minnesota in the NFL draft coming up at the end of the month. Let's go back over to Emily with one of them. We got a superstar in the building today, Terrell Smith. You were a huge part of this Gopher secondary since you came in in 2018. What's the biggest way that you were able to have so much success with this team? Uh, I would just say like just trusting the coaches and like just just trusting the plan that they have for you and just being able to prepare. Uh, they gave, they like showed us how to prepare really well, so I, I feel like that really helped. We had some big departures on this Gopher defense. Who are one or two guys that you got your eye on that could be really big impact players this upcoming fall? Uh, I say Justin Wally. I feel like he's definitely a playmaker. He's going to get his hands on a couple of balls this year. All right, you got the NFL draft coming up less than a week. I know you were at the Combine just a month ago. How are we feeling headed in? Uh, the jitters are starting to come in. I'm just getting ready to hear my name called and see where I go. All right, thank you so much, Terrell. Thank you. Now the jitters are starting to set in for Terrell Smith, the speedster who's likely to be picked next week out of Minnesota. They have 12 guys drafted since 2020, and these are the four that are almost locks 
to go next week. And John Michael Schmitz is a day one lock. I can promise you that. Terrell Smith, I'm not going to be shocked if he's taking day two. He's so big, he's so fast, and in today's NFL, you need a guy like that. Jordan Howden slated day three. If he's day three, it's going to be early day three. I promise you someone's going to come up and grab him. And Mo Ibrahim, just the workhorse. If you need a consistent back who is guaranteeing you four yards of carry, that's your man. Not Also, Mariano Sori Marin. I would not be shocked to see him go day three. He's too smart. He's too big. He's too dynamic. Well, that's another storyline for this Minnesota defense. How do you replace the captain in the middle that's on the NFL? We should have some football next from the Larson Performance Center in Minneapolis. Well, we welcome you back just in time for real football to start. We got through the stretching drills and the individual drills. Connor Onion with Brock Vereen, Emily Eamon with you for the Maroon Gold game. And Brock, we have to remind people that the Maroon team is wearing white today. Yes, yeah, of course. And Kaliak Manis at quarterback. It starts with the Maroon team picking up five yards on first down. So we have we have the maroon team wearing white, and we have Ariante Ursary carrying the football. <laughs> Look at the big guy taking the first carry up the middle. There's there's <laughs> there's always wrinkles here in Minneapolis. Yeah, that is the the starting left tackle, a returning starter. So we told you that we'll give you the format, but we don't know. <laughs> Nothing's rip, rip, promised. Rip it up once the the actual game starts. So Ariante. Ursary gets five yards on his first career spring game carry. <laughs> and to a more traditional look, we were told it's going to be a stable of running backs. With Mo Ibrahim gone, we weren't sure it was going to mean that a left tackle was going to carry the ball. <laughs> well, there we get the expected running back in Sean Tyler, the highly touted transfer out of Western Michigan, expecting a lot of things from him. and. It's just the post-Mo era. It feels so strange seeing a guy who's been out there for the last five seasons tearing it up, and now we have a crop of guys who are going to have to fill that role. You know, Tyler is one of three guys that has come from Western Michigan, P.J. Flex old school. We've got Corey Crooms on this offense. We also got Ryan Seelig. Uh, that's uh, almost intercepted. Ryland Kelly almost picked off the deflection, and it'll be fourth down. Ethan firing that ball into Corey Crooms, another one of those transfers who you had just been mentioning. They're really excited for him in the slot. Some interior pressure getting the, ooh. Spring ball, you do not touch that quarterback, so he might be getting an earful when he gets back to the sideline. That ball came in, great coverage there though. Fantastic coverage by Miles Fleming on Corey Crooms. Colton Gregerson right at the feet of the quarterback. I think he I think he laid off <laughs> just enough, but he might still get an earful. OK, so a three and out uh, a win for the gold defense to begin it. And we just saw Kaliak Manis at quarterback. We'll see Cole Kramer here and uh, an expected look at three or four of those new running backs that P.J. Fleck moves in. And a new running back coach, Nick McKissick Luke, comes over from Northern Illinois, taking over for longtime running back coach Kenny Burns, now the head coach at Kent State. New running backs, new running back coach, new offense, a lot of excitement in that run game. Now on the gold side, you'll see Bryce Williams, you'll see Zach Evans and Max Grands. Those are the three that'll line up and next to Cole Kramer. Uh, Kramer works it out to Daniel Jackson on the option and last year's leading receiver moves the chains on his first touch of the spring game. Fantastic play call there. Everybody went with that action to the right. Whole lot of space to the left. Bryce Williams has been here for quite a while. Over 200 carries in his five year career. Mostly third down blocking but you can expect a lot of carries there. Sean Tyler and Darius Taylor the freshman who got here in January. Man are they excited about him. Kramer off of the play fake taking a shot he's got a wide open receiver down the sideline the gold team scores first. If you're wondering who that is it's because it's a safety Tyler Newbin coming to the offensive side of the ball. We were told that trick plays may be up a couple sleeves here based off of that sideline celebration we may have just seen one of them Tyler Newbin getting into the end zone. So Newbin is going to play limited snaps today, an all-Big Ten safety on the 57-yard touchdown. And look at him running the ball, getting in there, flashing that famous Tyreek Hill peace sign. Actually, Antoine Winfield, famous peace sign. 
Look at that. I don't know how many times he's gotten into the end zone in his career, but I promise he will be reminding his teammates on the Maroon team about this moment all season long. Well, he even had the presence of mind to switch hands, go to the I outside mean, he hands. he looks like a natural to me. PJ can't help but smile. Emily, what's going on? Well, guys, you saw Tyler Newbin after that touchdown and how much joy he had. And head coach P.J. Fleck has said he's not just an X factor that plays with a full disregard for his body. If you want to look at what loving football looks like, just watch Tyler Newbin. He said it's rare this day and age to have so much fun while playing the game, whether it's the film room, the weight room, seven on seven. He is always smiling. He says he doesn't just think I want to make it to the NFL. He wants to be all pro best of the best. That is a guy that just loves playing this game. Emily, and the interesting thing about that is Newbin could have gone to the NFL this year but decided to return. Decided to come back, and I tell you what, defensive coordinator Joe Rossi is very excited. <laughs> he's, he's dancing the way. I don't know how much we're going to see him on defense, but he's made his presence felt offensively. And the comparison to Antoine Winfield is not just because of how they play aggressive, downhill playmakers. It's because they're always smiling. They're always having fun just like that. Yes, they are the most dedicated guys in the film room, in the study hall, in the classroom, but they have fun with every single moment. You said that defensive coordinator Joe Rossi is excited. What about the new co-offensive coordinators maybe getting Tyler Newbin <laughs> a little, little two sides of the ball? I wouldn't count anything out. As well as he knows defense, I'm sure he knows offense too. Uh, Matt Simon, who was the wide receivers coach, still coaches the wide receivers. And Greg Harbo, who was the tight ends coach last year. They're now co-coordinators. The Maroon offense is back onto the field. And Hoskins gets the carry, and he is stacked up. So misdirection, trick plays, <laughs> all of it to begin as Hoskins goes for a loss. Trying a little bit of everything. Kristen Hoskins showing a little, a little fumble ruski action. He is a little smaller, but speed, speed, speed. That's the name of the game with Hoskins. I love a guy whose name pops up because on the scout team, he gave the starting defense all they could handle last year. You know what guy is ready for the big time when he took it to one of the best defenses in college football. Kaliak Manis back at quarterback, and he goes deep down the field, and that's incomplete. He had one of his new targets, Elijah Spencer, running a post route there. That's one of the guys that they are really high about. He's the former Conference USA Freshman of the Year at Charlotte. He absolutely was. He is a standout. Go to YouTube when you get a second and look up those highlights. He can get you some explosives. We know what Chris Altman Bell brings to the table. Of course, he's recovering from an extensive knee surgery. Daniel Jackson had as good of an end to the season as anyone in the Big Ten. Shoot, you had Corey Crooms, you had Elijah Spencer, you're cooking. Uh, field side throw for Kaliak Manis incomplete. Uh, going for his brother Dino, and it's fourth down. So the wide receivers also have some depth with Lameki Brockington back. Hoskins, who had the first down carry, he's the fastest guy on the team. Which means they are going to find ways to get him the football it is that simple you line him up in the backfield you send him in motion on a fly sweep you get him the ball quick on a on a speed screen or something similar just get your athletes the football that, that, that's what comes with being the fastest guy and that is the fun of being indoors that punt just hit the ceiling <laughs> you want hang time we got hang time that cannot be held by the conditions at the Larson Performance Center well hey for the biggest Big Ten experience there is no plus like home the Big Ten plus app Powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe now. If you want to watch the replay of this game later on, that's the place to be, the Big Ten Plus app. I know Tyler Newman will be watching this replay. <laughs> I think he's going to clip that and maybe put that on his NFL draft tape. Yes, he should. <laughs> he had the opening score for the gold team, 57 yards for the All-Big Ten safety, who passed on the NFL for now. And now his gold team takes back over with Cole Kramer at quarterback. And he hands off, and that's stacked up inside. And defensive line, they're looking to build some depth today. But you also got Cody Lindenberg scraping around who can make plays, as we've seen the last two years. The words of P.J. Fleck, this is a direct quote. He might be the best linebacker we ever coached by the time he's done here. The best, Connor. So, yeah, expectations are pretty high for Cody Lindenberg, and he will show flashes of that. 
He made the tackle on that first down play that went for no gain. Kramer back over the middle. He has Daniel Jackson with his second touch, and that goes for a first down. And that's exciting right there. One of the thorns in the wide receiver side last year was catches through contact. They struggled to find a consistent slot receiver because a lot of those receptions come with contact. A lot of times through that hit, the ball would pop out, which sometimes leads to an interception or just an incompletion. Happy to see some catches through contact by, by Daniel Jackson, who was a wide up, but they're looking for a slot receiver. They, they can move guys around, showing your versatility is great. Jackson goes for 11 and inside for a short gain for Bryce Williams. Going back to Daniel Jackson real quick and contested catches. Think about that highlight we showed earlier in the pinstripe bowl. Yes. He caught it wrestling it away from a DB. His helmet flew off. Maybe that's a <laughs> sign of contested catches to come. And what I love about Daniel Jackson, he's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. But if you put that ball in the air, he has the mindset of that is my football. No one else's. If you try to get it, you're going to lose. I'm winning this play. That's the mindset that they want. It led the team last year over 500 and a half yards. Uh, Kramer, another shot, and that's complete. Another big passing play to start the day. It's Brockington inside the five yard line. And what a route! What a post. That is a long developing play, so let's start off giving credit to the offensive line. But watch how long it takes that route to develop up top. Coleman Bryson in the coverage. Lamecki Brockington, the young guy who was thrown into the fire last year after the Chris Altman Bell injury and some other guys went down. They threw him in. He did great. And here he is making plays once again. A 52-yard hit. And back on the ground. And the goal team punches it in. So Zach Evans across the goal line. And the goal team with both scores. Both set up by big passing plays. Maroon team, or rather maroon team wearing white team, is getting all they can handle right now. Zach Evans is an interesting story. He had so much hype around him when he got on campus, and rightfully so. And It's just been injuries with him. Last year, he had a great spring game. And then during training camp, he gets banged up. It's just a matter of staying healthy for him, but he can be special. All right, you were talking about the wide receivers. We're talking wide receivers with Emily Eman on the sidelines. Yeah, we got Chris Ottman Bell here. Chris, you liking what you're seeing so far? We got some big pass plays coming. We do. Shout out the receiver group, man. Shout out all my guys making plays. So yeah, for sure. All right, well, you decided to come back for your seventh year of football after a season-ending knee injury. What was the biggest factor in deciding to come back? Uh, whatever is best for my future. You know, I talked to my coaches, my family, and everyone else that involved with everything, and the best decision was to come back. I'm excited I'm back here. Um, I'm enjoying this with my, my guys. I, I love watching my guys ball out and work every day, and it's so exciting. So that was the reason. We have early enrollees coming in, freshmen coming onto campus soon. Are you starting to feel old yet or what? Oh, yeah, I get called uncle sometimes in the locker room, so I don't, I don't really like that, but it is what it is. But, uh, and I've been here going on seven years coming June, so you know it is what it is. I'm going to be the uncle of the team, so yeah. <laughs> What's your biggest piece of advice for those younger guys coming up? Uh, be yourself. Take your time. You don't know how much time you have with this, so just enjoy it. Enjoy everything. Work as hard as you can and love life and love what you do. We got a new quarterback stepping into that spot after Tanner Morgan left with Ethan Kali McManus. What can we expect from your connection this fall with him? Uh, I love Ethan, man. He's young, he's silly, he's just he's energetic, he's amazing, man. He has a strong arm. I'm excited to see what he has to do, man. I'm excited to play one more year with him. So I mean, he's going to have a lot in store for the Gopher fans, everyone who's watching. So. I know you're still going through the rehab process, but where are you at right now? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm starting to pick up my running now. Uh, I'm working with my guy Joe, Sip, and the training staff. They're amazing, even the strength, the strength staff as well. They're all helping out. They're all amazing. I'm excited to get back. I'm almost there. So. Well, we definitely can't wait to see you back out there. Chris, thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank back you. to you guys. Year seven coming for number seven, Chris Hopman bell I appreciate his candid answers about why he came back. And yeah. Some thoughts on the new quarterback as well. Well, uh, with him back, with adding five wide receivers, that's why P.J. Flex said what he said yesterday. We might be as close as we have been to a 50-50 run-pass split. And why not, right? Why not? You have the arm. You have the experienced receivers. You have the speedy receivers. You have the bigger receivers. They have so much versatility in that receiver room, whereas it was a lot of 
possession receivers capable of making explosive plays. Now you have explosive wide receivers. There is a difference. They are so excited about the wide receiver room, and they're excited about a quarterback who's going to chuck that ball 60 yards downfield and ask questions later. And then that quarterback is Kaliak Manis, who will be called for the sack. Of course, the quarterbacks are not live. And the sack brings up fourth down as Colton Gregerson gets home and did not touch the quarterback again. Smart move by him. That's the best way to stay around here is to not hit the quarterback. Gets through that offensive line, separates and just tags off right there. Smart play. And this offensive line is definitely going to be a topic of conversation. I know there's a lot of concern. You lose all three interior linemen. That's your left guard, your right guard, and your center. And I'm not seeing the big deal because the year prior, they had to replace four or five offensive linemen. Last year, John Michael Schmitz was the only recognizable name. So it's been done before. They'll do it again. Here's what we know about Minnesota's offensive line. They'll be big, they'll be fast, and they'll be physical. They'll find five guys who can do that. Well, with what you have returning, you have the blind side and Ursary, who we saw at running back earlier, that left tackle coming back, and then Quinn Carroll on the right side. So you have blind side, strong side covered. It's that interior that is the question mark as far as who the names will be. And it's so important because I understand the left tackle is the superstar of the offensive line, if you will. Minnesota wants to run the ball. Your interior line sets that front, and as far as pass protection, if you get pressure up the gut, your quarterback is going to panic 10 times out of 10, so they got to shore that up as well. There's Brockington. He had the 52-yard reception last drive, caught after the catch by Goosby in the secondary. Another first down through the air for Kramer, who's looked good with a 5-for-5 five five start. You cannot call him a Wildcat quarterback anymore. He's back there checking that thing, and I'm sure he's very grateful for this opportunity to show that. Again, he will play. Ethan is the guy. Cole Kramer will play, and it's going to be much more than Wildcat plays. And that's what he's been in the past. P.J. Fleck expects that he's going to play in just about every game like you were talking about, and the whole playbook will be open to him. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be tough for defenses to plan for that. It's hard enough to find tendencies in a new quarterback, right? There's only so much film on eighth and three, four and a half games worth from a season ago. But now I have to plan for this number 12, too. You're asking a lot out of me, coach. So it's definitely an advantage to have multiple quarterbacks who can take a snap. And Kramer on those opening two drives, three of three for 116 yards, including what might be the highlight of the day. We'll see at the end. Tyler I'd say Newman's that touchdown. it's a pretty good start, Connor. It's <laughs> a pretty good start to the game. It's a read give for Kramer. And not much there up the gut. And it's third down. This goal team defensive line is, is stout up there. Not a, a ton of time up there for Ethan. Now, the maroon team wearing white. I feel like I have to <laughs> reference that every single time. Slow start, but they're coming alive now. Not much is getting done between the uh, tackles there. And I mean, when your defensive line coach is so young and so fired up, you know you're going to be ready to play in, in big moments like this. Anthony Smith made that last tackle, a guy that they're counting on for some depth. He grew up in the shadow of Penn State coming here to Minnesota. And Kramer, another strong fire. Brockington becoming his favorite target. And he's out near the 30, shy of the first down. It's going to be just short. Let's see how aggressive they want to get. Nope, the, the, uh, the uh, punt teams are coming on. But clearly, we know who Cole's go-to guy is. Lamecki Brockington getting open. And smart play by the defense there. If you want to run a five-yard out, that's fine. We'll give you that. We, we trust our guys to wrap you up and get you on the ground. And the play pushed back inside to one of the new guys at nickel, Jack Henderson, who P.J. Fleck views as a starter right away. Especially at that nickel position. He transfers over from southeastern Louisiana, where he was first team all Southland Conference. What I love about him and why nickel is the spot, six interceptions, that's awesome, but 163 tackles. He's not afraid to get his nose in there. And at 6'3", 210, you better believe he has some linebacker abilities in there on the run fits. And Southland football is known for shootouts, so he's been in oh, a yeah. lot of those type of games. Hey, tonight, one of the best rivalries in men's lacrosse. It's Johns Hopkins in Maryland. Then the women's lacrosse regular season closes out. It's the Wildcats and the Terps. All tonight, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. So I know a lot of our time in the fall is consumed watching Big Ten football, but 
that Jack Henderson, maybe the new starting nickel, played at Southeastern Louisiana last year. They played eight games that were played in the 40s. More than half their games are shootouts, so you know he can play out in space. You know he can play out in space. And why it's so pivotal to have a guy like him is you take a look at the landscape of college football in the Big Ten. Yes, the image will always be 20 offensive linemen who are going to rotate through and beat you to a pulp with our fullback and running back, but things are getting spread out. Look at Purdue. Look at Nebraska. I mean, Wisconsin's going to be throwing the ball out this year, so you need a nickel who can cover and tackle. And Henderson might get a chance against his own offense to see some of that with Cali Yakmanis slinging it around the yard as well as Cole Kramer. There's the gold team. Two touchdowns in the first quarter for Minneapolis. In the end of quarter number one, start of quarter number two at the Minnesota Maroon Gold game inside at the Larson Performance Center. Connor Onion, Brock Vereen, Emily Eman. So grab an oar. That's the uh, order of the fans that were coming to the Maroon Gold game originally outside and, of course, going with the row of the boat theme. Lots of changeover on the staff, including Kenny Burns getting the opportunity to be the head coach at Kent State, the former running backs coach. New running back coach and Nick McKissick Luke with a new crop of running backs. Excited for them. Excited for Nick Monroe as well. The cornerbacks coach spent the last seven years at Syracuse under Tony White in that famous 3-3-5. Now, is Joe Rossi going to convert to a 3-3-5 permanently? No, but we know that Nick Monroe is really good at getting a lot of DBs ready to ready to play. That's exactly what they need. Maybe you have that in your pocket. Of course, a lot of teams and some other conferences are going to that. It's a big run for the Maroon team starts the second quarter, and they've got a first down with Jordan Newbin, the brother of the touchdown scorer, Tyler Newbin. And I'm sure Jordan's wondering where Tyler is. Hey, Tyler, I thought you were supposed to be back there. Why are you on the offensive side of the ball? I want to run you over. No, Jordan Newbin's name is absolutely in that stable of running backs, and it's going to be different in that running back room because Mo Ibrahim isn't there. He was the workhorse. He was getting the ball 36 times a game. I see running back by committee this year. They don't have to find one. They can find three or four. Well, they have six in this spring, and that's the first completion for Kaliak Manis. Goes for a first down to newcomer Corey Crooms. They're excited about Corey Crooms. I mean, first off, just look how quickly that ball can get right over the middle. When you're going over the middle, you want that ball as quickly as possible. Corey Crooms brings it in. He can do a lot from the slot. Now Corey Crooms from Western Michigan, over 700 yards the last couple of years for PJ Flex, former school. His last stop before Minnesota, they're in Kalamazoo. And I, I would say, Connor, the slot wide receiver position is the defensive end of the offense, meaning they've been struggling to find a defensive end since Boye Mafe. They've been struggling to find a slot receiver since Tyler Johnson. It's not an easy task in the Big Ten. you got to go up against some big linebackers, some big safeties who are going to be teeing off on you. Corey Crooms is the guy. They need some explosives from the hashes, and he can definitely bring that. That's why Minnesota fans will be happy to hear that P.J. Flex compared Crooms to Tyler Johnson. Well, how about that? <laughs> Said he's, he's not quite as big. Yeah, de definitely uh, slimmer, but a little more explosive, I would say. His first catch off of the play fake and right back to Crooms and near the sticks again before Darius Green tracks him down from safety. So Kaliak Manis, good chemistry already with Crooms. Goal defense sticking with man coverage. Corey Crooms and Kaliak Manis taking advantage of that. It was a, a completionless first quarter for Kaliak Manis, but two for two on his last two throws. And three for three, getting it inside the five yard line. Goes to Evan Redding, and it's first and goal Maroon team. To be able to consistently make those passes through traffic over the middle, that's what we talk about arm strength. Arm strength isn't just being able to throw a 30 yard post, a 25 yard dig, it's a five yard route on the money, getting it to your guy before the window closes. So three straight completions for Kaliak Manis, and he hands off to Newbin, who puts the truck stick on and almost reaches the goal line. He was yard close. short. <laughs> He was definitely close. Looked like Kerry Brown was in the mix there, making sure that he was not able to get in. I'm curious if they stick staying on the ground to punch this thing in or if they're going to see if Aethan can find somebody on the outside. 
And sticking with Newpin, who started this drive with a chunk run. He's at running back. And he finishes the drive with a touchdown. Jordan Newman puts the Maroon team on the board. After the first Maroon team touchdown, here is Emily Eman. All right, we got some scores on the board now. Maroon team catching up. What have you seen today that you like? All the defensive coaches hate it, right? So, uh, no, I, I, I tell you, the kids are playing really hard. That's what I wanted to be able to see. Uh, then Cole Kramer started really fast, which is good to see. Eighth had a nice drive right there. Um, you know, I think Lomecki had a great catch. I mean, the kids are playing really hard. They're taking it very serious. That's what we love about this, because we get to evaluate people in high-pressure situations like a game, and a lot of guys are emerging, which is good. Coach, thank you. You got it. He said the defensive coaches hate this. Oh, man, Joe Ross is fuming right now. Because it's, it's, it's so funny when they split into, you know, gold team, red team, yellow team, white team, whatever it may be. Because if you're a coordinator and you're assigned to one side, you're still watching your guys who you're technically playing <laughs> against. So the last thing he wants to see is points. But both the offensive coaches on both sides of the ball should be over the moon right now. Well, you wonder as a defensive coordinator today, you know some of the other teams throughout the Big Ten are watching the spring games. <laughs> yes. And if there's a trick play that works against your defense, <laughs> does that show up in the fall at some point? It's such a slippery slope. My answer would be you're getting trick plays week one regardless. All right, I, I promise you those are going to happen no matter what. But I'm sure it, it, it's in the back of their mind, possibly. Another big run, Zach Evans into open space. Zach Evans might go. And he does for a touchdown. Zach Evans has been a name to watch for two years now. And if he can remain healthy, we're going to be seeing this throughout the season. Look at him getting vertical. And look at this move on Coleman Bryson. Whoop, whoop. And he is gone and off to the races. Again, Zach was going to be one of the guys last year in that mix with Mo Ibrahim and, and, and Trey Potts. He just got hurt. That's all it was. That's all it was. If he can remain healthy, he will be doing that all season. And uh, again, it's going to be running back by committee. Darius Taylor, Sean Tyler, Bryce Williams, Zach Evans. To have that many bodies, that's also how you keep people healthy. You mentioned how the injury held him out for a lot of last year. That one game that he played in was Northwestern, and he scored a touchdown in it. He is ready. What, 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 what Darius Taylor is right now, oh, we got this four-star young freshman running back. He's so excited. That was Zach Evans. It was just a couple years ago. But he's going to remain healthy, and he's going to be good to go. Darius Taylor is exciting. Sean Tyler is the experienced guy. Now, he may be the first guy out there to take a snap each game, you know, quote unquote starter, but he's 15 carries a game average at Western Michigan, so they're not going to ask him to be Mo and take the ball 35 times a game. That's not his style, but how he differs from Mo is he's explosive. He's the home run hitter, and they could use some of that as well. You saw four names on that graphic. Of course, Jordan Newbin, who we've seen today at, at running back two. It's understandable the concern when you lose a Mo Ibrahim, what the running game will look like, because you had the Big Ten leading rusher. You had the all-time leading rusher leave, including Trey Potts, who transferred. Yes. But it's 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 concerning on paper, right? Because you're thinking our workhorse of basically the whole PJ Fleck era is gone. The 1,000 yard guy who's supposed to take his place is gone. Breathe easy. It's okay. There's a lot of versatility back there. You have four or five guys who are more than capable of taking a carry and making an offense pay. And a notable thing, too, all of these guys can catch the ball out of the backfield. So as we're still getting a look at this, this new look offense for the Gophers, I promise you running backs in the pass game will be a factor. Well, we saw Minnesota get a little creative with wide receivers in the run game. Haven't seen those guys in the pass game yet. And Kaliak Manis is tapped down. And it's another play made by Colton Gregerson, the guy a little bit further down on the projected depth chart with a couple of sacks. And he gets the celebration, too. And that's the beauty of spring games. You heard Coach Fleck with Emily not too long ago. They wanted high stakes. They want depth. That's, that's what hurts you the most when a lot of guys transfer out is you're 
starters are your starters, but you need depth. And guys like that can work their way up the chart, and before you know it, your number gets called, and they know that they can trust you. So the guy that was on the receiving end of the celebration, Winston D. La Thibault Dare, the 25-year-old ball of energy at defensive line. Boom! Patty cake, patty cake, Baker's man. Watch this, here we go. 180, let's hit. He's a little stop. You got to bring your feet, right? Yeah, he got me. <laughs> I'm going to say him. A He's a little stout. We're in the business of making plays. Wake up right now. Don't worry about anything else with your key, Anthony. Everything else is window dress. This one, this one, this one, you got to set it. It's got to be faster. You're not wrong. Just yes, but faster. You get what I'm saying? Go. Uh oh, you might be ready to go today. You might be ready. Yeah! Hey man, go again. I like that group. I like it. Go again. I want to see it again. Cause you're a super. Yeah. There you go. Boom! It was soft. It was soft. Well, you gotta love a, a big, tough, physical guy that starts a segment like that singing patty cake. <laughs> They they love him. There's no other way to put it. They love him. Some of them might even remember him. I mean, to go from player to position coach in that short amount of time, and he's only 25, you dang right he will be a head coach before he's 30 years old. I'm doubling down on that. He is the real deal. And there's something to the aspect of, hey, coach, I'm not understanding it. Can you show me? Yeah, I had my hand in the dirt three years ago. Let me get down here and show you exactly what I mean. That can go a long way. We brought up earlier four defensive line coaches in five years. There needs to be stability, especially with a young group, and it's going to go a long way. Look, he's also the newcomer coordinator on top of coaching the defensive linemen. So with some of that youthful energy that you just saw, he's a guy that helps bring recruits on campus. And once they get here and are on the roster, he helps them acclimate because he's lived it as a gopher football and player. And it wasn't that long ago that he lived it, right? He understands what Fleck expects out of you as a player. And now as a coach, he can translate that to young 18-year-olds who are ready to make a, a, a big change in their life. The Kendrick Lanier completion got the gold team near midfield. That's knocked down. It's third down. I believe that got tipped just based off of where it released and where it ended up. So great job by the Maroon defensive line. We haven't seen Kramer in a lot of third downs. <laughs> this, this gold offense has been absolutely electric. Third long. Excited to see Kramer in this situation. It's because he's close to 200 yards in the first half through the air. <laughs> it's just absurd. Well, we're early in the second quarter, too. And that was his first incompletion after a perfect six of six start. And on third and 11, Kramer going underneath and a rally coming with Tariq Watson making the tackle shy of the sticks. Great tackle there by Tariq. A lot of times when you're in a third and long as a DB, you think, okay, here's my chance. Ball's going in the air. I got to make a play. But it's smart. Hey, you're going to run a three, five-yard route. I'm going to let you catch it. That's fine because I'm going to give you some more space to have the opportunity to catch it. I just have to make the tackle. Punt team's on the field. We're good to go. We showed you the visual earlier about looking for a new starting corner with Terrell Smith onto the NFL. So these are big reps for Watson and those corners. Coming up July 15th, the BTN Big 10K returns to Soldier Field. 10K and 5K races and a post-run tailgate party. Scan that QR code or register right now at btnbig10k.com. So this time of year, you know, your roster isn't quite complete. One position we haven't talked about yet, we're going to hear from this guy in a little bit. Tight ends is in a really good place. Brevin Span Ford not practicing this spring, recovering from injury, but you got to love what you have as far as pass catching and blocking at that spot. Took a massive leap last year, and statistically speaking, if you're into, you know, PFF, player grades, and all that, he was the best in the Big Ten at it the best run blocking tight end and he's known as a pass catcher so much that people forget no 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 he enjoys blocking he wants his hand in the dirt 
And that's what the NFL wants. Right now, there's this schism in tight ends where you're either a Travis Kelsey or you're a George Kittle. He's in the George Kittle category, which is what you want. He can do it all. It's Martin Owusu, defensive lineman down for the gold team. So we've got a stoppage early in the second quarter with the Wusu getting attention from the training staff. Uh, Wusu was in on that uh, short run play with Darius Taylor carrying the ball. And of course the stated goal for P.J. Fleck coming into this game is get some work in but keep everybody healthy. That's the most important aspect. A at the end of the day it's a bunch of big guys playing fast, running into each other. These things happen, but of course, with with such a young roster and also such a thin roster in regards to depth, this is the last thing you want to see, but he's walking off under his own power. Hopefully that's a great sign. And freshman, that's a Minnesota native from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Martin Owusu, walking off on his own power. So Taylor in it running back, the four-star freshman from Michigan. And a couple first downs on this drive already. Kramer rolls the pocket, lets it fly. That is down inside the 15-yard line and intercepted. So Kerry Brown, who was down in a play on the goal line earlier, has the interception for the gold team. Kaliak Manis extending the play, trying to make something happen. Watch Elijah Spencer up top. He does have him beat by a step. Kaliak Manis releases it kind of off of one foot because the defender is in his face. Ball comes up about seven yards short and some more good things for the goal team. A January enrollee making a play in his first live look in front of a crowd. No one to remember and taken to the fall for Kerry Brown at safety. That is not to be taken for granted. The fact that just a few months ago he was talking about prom and, and all this stuff like, hey guys, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to go be making interceptions in my first spring game. He made it worth it to miss prom. <laughs> yes, he did. Getting a pick today. Uh -oh. oh, here's a double pass, and oh. that's knocked out of there. <laughs> oh, Lanier was streaking behind the defense on the trick play. And the MVP of the bowl game, Coleman Bryson, recovers. Coleman says, not on my watch. A lot of trick plays start with a fly motion going one direction because you want yourself, you want your defense thinking that. Go the other direction and Coleman just able to get that big hand up there and knock it down. I, I, as a DB, I'm selfishly always going to root for a DB, but back-to-back -back trick play touchdowns would have been something as well. So we got an exception to your rule. Just this once. Well, Bryson had that pick six in the bowl game. It, really hard to believe that was the first pick six that Minnesota ever had in a bowl game. What are you when, trying to say, Connor? Where was yours is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, every time I got an interception, I was either in the end zone, and as much as I wanted to take it out, it wouldn't have been worth the earful on the sideline if I didn't make it all the way, because that, that's what our coach always said, is if you take it out, if you get an interception in the red zone, if you do not score, don't even come back to the sideline. If you if you leave that end zone and you do not score, don't come back, and that always rang in my head, so I never got the opportunity, but I'm more than happy that Coleman did what I could not. A former gopher up here, Brock Farine. We had uh, the umpire take a <laughs> shot on that. The fourth down, Cole Kramer having a laugh about that. That's the old uh, longest yard play. <laughs> hit, hit the umpire. <laughs> and the umpire said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did nothing wrong, Cole. All you can do is smile at that. <laughs> was that a wink or was that just a kind of a, a twitch? I thought he, he, he might have winked at the umpire. I'm going to call it a wink. And so the gold team kicks it away after umpire interference. All these special teams on air. We were talking tight end earlier, and Emily's got Brevin Span Ford. We got the preseason All-American here, but you could have gone pro last season. Why did you decide to come back? 
uh, my teammates. Uh, you know, it's a great co program here. It's a life program, and uh, I wouldn't be here without any of my teammates. So it's, it's great being back here. What's the biggest thing you want to accomplish in this last season of college football? Uh, a West Division title. That's what we're striving for every year. And uh, I think we have a good shot at it this year. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting year for us. You had some veterans graduate last year with quarterback Tanner Morgan, Mo Ibrahim. Who are one or two guys that you're really looking at that could have a big impact this upcoming fall? Uh, I'd say, I mean, we got a lot of guys coming back as well. Um, that's what we're focused on. You know, those guys left with great leadership, and uh, I can't wait to get going. I know you had shoulder surgery after the season. Where are you at in the rehab process right now? Yeah, I should be cleared in a few weeks here, so it's exciting to get be back on the field and catching footballs and blocking. So, All right, what can we expect from you this upcoming fall? Uh, my very best. Our very best, I should say. All right, thank you so much, Rep. Appreciate it. Emily Brevin thank you the coaching staff from Minnesota Fields he's the second best tight end in the country I'm with him I, I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely with that he he always had the ability and everyone was kind of wondering as the years went by okay he's big he's fast he's strong when's it going to come together and last year it came together and it wasn't the physical aspect it was the mental you could understand him processing okay I don't just have to run there and turn around. It's what is the defense doing? You, you saw him dissecting coverages, and then your athletic ability shines even more. Huge year for him. Oh, that was a dart from Kaliak Manis that Elijah Spencer reels in. Good hands catch there for a first down. It's looking like Elijah and, and Kaliak Manis have a whole lot of chemistry going on over the middle. That is not an easy catch. Not only are you leaving your feet, not only are you cognizant of the safety coming down on you that ball is <laughs> it's only 12 yards from it and it's coming at 100 miles an hour but that's the beauty of a strong arm like we said you can get it into those tiny windows and so he went short and hard he goes high and soft and it's incomplete uh, going for the back pylon and Cade Conzemius and uh, Elijah Spencer down there again perfect pass here by Ethan you cannot place this any better. Look how this ball gets to where the DBs can't and only Elijah can. He has to make that play. He will make that play when it's game time. Great play by Cade Kazemius, son of Justin Kazemius. Great go for him. Uh, back underneath, three straight targets for the new guy, Elijah Spencer. And another fastball for a first down between Kaliak, Manis, and Spencer. Looks like Maroon team and Ethan are saying, look, if you're going to play off man coverage, we're going to take these underneath throws time after time after time. Now you get down to the red zone. Those underneath throws get a little trickier because there's just so many bodies in a compact, tight space. Unless that ball is going to go to the ground, they're going to have to spread it out a little bit. So first and goal just ahead of halftime. And the pull from Taylor and Kaliak Manis with a walk-in touchdown. Everybody going with the flow of the freshman running back, Taylor, and through the back door for six. And I can't blame them there. Of course, you're going to think Taylor's getting the ball. And Kaliak Manis is not going to lead with his legs, but he can run it good enough to where, just like that, when you catch a defense asleep, he can make you pay. And when Athan is in the open field, I promise you he has some top-end speed as well. Well, it started with... Couple of receptions to Spencer, has got four catches for 46 yards. And then Kaliak Manis finishes it out. Well, it's a Thursday night start against Nebraska. Minnesota gets to welcome Matt Rule into the league in their home stadium on a Thursday night in August. You know Minnesota loves that early Thursday night game, but this may be the one with all of the attention, maybe to rival that Ohio State game from, from two years ago. Everybody wants to see the debut of Matt Rule. I love that bye between Michigan and Iowa, two primetime matchups with a lot riding on them in regards to Big Ten standings. That bye comes in handy, and boy, do they finish that season strong with Purdue, the Big Ten West champs of a year ago, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. Not mad at the schedule, and of course, week three going to Carolina is gonna be fun as well. We are 131 days away from kickoff. Today is the perfect scout day for the Big Ten opener on the 31st. Halfway through the maroon and gold game, we'll get you out to Lincoln after this. So you get to see that first Big Ten matchup play out in back-to-back -back spring games. So after the Cali, uh, Kaliak man is touchdown, we go to halftime with the maroon team getting it back to a seven-point game. 
It was all gold to begin it. High intensity here from the Larson Performance Center and playing some real football with high scoring through a half. Both quarterbacks for Minnesota with good moments in the first half. Cole Kramer, long touchdown to Tyler Newbin, the safety. And uh, Ethan Kaliak Manis closed it out with a rushing touchdown. And let's go over to Emily here at the half. I have athletic director Mark Coro with me. Mark, PJ Fleck is one of your first big hires as you came in in 2017. What's the biggest way that you've seen this program grow since he came in? You know, it's amazing when we hired him. It's hard to believe he's starting year seven, you know, with us. And when we hired him, you know, he talked about how people in the state of Minnesota and across the country be talking about Minnesota football. And if you look at what he's done here during this time here, it's unbelievable. You know, we have our highest academic marks we've ever had. I think our GPA is over a 3-2. We're one of like eight programs that have won nine or more games the last three full seasons of college football, six straight bowl wins. So a lot of excitement, and we're really grateful to have them here in our program. It definitely seems that way. You increased his salary pool this last fall. How do you think that will impact this program's future? Well, as you know, it's so competitive, and the Big Ten's not getting any easier. You know, I mean, if you look at the Big Ten West, the Big Ten East, and with the addition of USC and UCLA, uh, you know, we feel like we want him here long term. We've got a great president, President Gable, on our board has been very supportive. And again, PJ has done all the right things. And I always talk about people, you know, he's the first one when our softball team goes to the College World Series or our hockey team goes to the Frozen Four, he's the first one to high five them. So he's very visible in our department and that energy has been infectious. What is it about this athletic department that makes Minnesota so special? You know, I think we've got great, great support. And, and again, it's not very Minnesota to talk about these things, but when you take a step back, you know, academically, we're the highest rated public school in the country. Our student athletes have a great point average of 3.41, which is phenomenal. Athletically, the Director's Cup came out this past week. We're 14th in the country, which means you're in the top 6%. So we have a lot of really cool things going on, but we've got a great fan base. We've got great new facilities and a lot of positive excitement going on in our department right now. Yeah, great facilities. you got great new coaches coming in on the women's basketball side and volleyball front. What was one thing that stood out from each of those candidates to you to make those hires? Well, I know you know Keegan well from your days playing volleyball. You know, Keegan coming from Washington, Keegan Cook has just been a great addition to our program, and he had great, great success out of Washington. And then when we hired Don Plitzewhite from West Virginia, you know, Dawn's from Wisconsin. She actually coached at Wisconsin, coached at Michigan, so she's got Big Ten ties. And, you know, I, I tell people I'm not saying this because I'm talking with you, but the Big Ten network is a big deal. And, and when you can attract coaches and student athletes, when you can talk about the visibility we get from not only the Big Ten Network, but other TV partners, it goes a long, long way. So we're very grateful for everything you guys do for our program, but it's a big difference for us. Well, thank you for that. Um, in terms of the football field, you're seeing a sneak preview of what we can expect next fall for this football team. What are you most excited for? You know, I'm excited. You know, PJ, again, he's kind of hit every benchmark we've talked about. And obviously, you know, we've had Tanner Morgan, who was with us for six years. Now we've got eighth in a quarterback, which is great. We've got some new linemen coming in, new defensive players coming in. And again, PJ, watching him develop these kids, you know, our recruiting classes have gotten better each year. And it's great to see these guys have their chance to step up and be a part of it. So it'll be a fun season for us. Mark, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate you. Back to you guys. And Mark Coyle, the AD. It's halftime at the Golden Maroon game. And uh, we've seen Ethan Kaliak Manis with some good moments in this first half, including a rushing touchdown. We knew he could get it done with his legs. We knew he could get it done with his arm. It was the arm that shined early, just how much zip he can get on the ball in some very tight windows. He can create comfort. That's probably the best way to phrase it. When your receiver trusts that, hey, I know I'm going over the middle, but Ethan's going to get me the ball in a place and quickly enough to where I'll be safe. That is fine with me. And then, of course, he can get it done with his legs. I'm not sure how much more of Ethan we're going to see, but if he's calling it here, maybe a slow start. But, oh, boy, what a second quarter. And that last drive, he completed three balls to Elijah Spencer, went for four catches, 41 yards on that drive. Trusted target. I mean, Ethan's go-to guy was Daniel Jackson last year. Daniel Jackson isn't on his team right now. Daniel Jackson is the enemy, but we've seen Corey Crooms, we've seen Elijah Spencer, we've seen him getting some work with some of the newer faces, and clearly there's some chemistry building. He's got the new guys on his side, Elijah Spencer and Corey Crooms at wide receiver. Good day for the kids at the Larson Performance Center, too. Now releasing the Gophers back onto the field at the Gold Maroon game. And uh, we're, we're getting ready for the second Solidarity. half, too. 
<laughs> we're in solidarity. <laughs> let, let me eat, coach. Let me Brock, eat. Brock, Vereen, Connor, I need to have a little even with you. Uh, we had a lot of questions about position groups today, right? Who's been the biggest winner in the first half? Running backs, but I tell you what, it may not be as glamorous. That defensive line has been the real deal, especially considering that was one of the bigger questions entering, but running back was a big question as well. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with the receivers as well, Elijah Spencer and Lamecki Brockington, to be specific. Well, the, the gold team got out to the fast start. Big pass play on their first drive. Cole Kramer's looked really sharp at quarterback. He certainly has. He's been locked in. Of course, it helps your confidence when you can get an early bomb to your free safety. That can definitely set the tone as Tyler Newman gets it done on the offensive side of the football for his only action today, by the way. And then Zach Evans has had himself a day. You see him punching it in there. He also got loose a little bit later, showing some explosivity. This running back room is different, but even after two spring ball quarters, you can feel a collective sigh of relief of, man, I wish Mo could play for 100 years, but we're going to be okay. Yeah, pretty big question along the offensive line, too, is who replaces the huge shoes at center with an NFL draft prospect there? Emily with more. Yeah, we got former Gopher All-American center John Michael Schmitz. John, preparing for the draft coming up in less than a week. What's your draft setup? Yeah, uh, honestly, just uh, going to be celebrating with the ones that got me here. And uh, going to go back home uh, in Homewood and just be around my family, be around friends, and just have a good time and uh, see what happens. We've been preparing for the last few months. What's been the most exciting part for you? Honestly, I just... I just love the process. I love taking it one day at a time and uh, enjoying it, enjoying it, honestly. Um, loving uh, the opportunities that I'm given and grateful for everything, so, yeah. One of those opportunities was the NFL Combine. How was that experience for you? Very cool experience. Always watched it uh, growing up and always wanted to be a part of it and uh, seeing myself in it and have my family there supporting me was a, a big opportunity and uh, loved everything about it. Well, looking back on your six years in this building at Minnesota, what memory sticks out with you most? Yeah, uh, honestly, just the relationships uh, that, that, that you make over the time. Uh, coming in six years with guys that uh, wanted to turn this program around. And uh, like you talk about Tanner Morgan, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim, and then uh, Chris Bell that's still here. I mean, those guys uh, changed this program for the better and uh, just looking to, uh, to bring championships here. So. John, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. Back to you guys. Emily, on average, the last three years, Minnesota's had four players drafted in the NFL, 12 guys since 2020, and a good chance that four are going to go and maybe five this year. And I'll tell you what, don't let that big smile on the left fool you. That is the meanest man in the building right now, and he will hear his name called in that first round, I promise you. Yeah, everything you, you read and watch is he's a first or second round guy and uh, starting to get some of that more momentum to definitely be in that first round. Absolutely. He is a guy that it, it, it sounds fluff. It sounds like I'm putting sauce on it or something, but he's a guy that your quarterback can look at and say, I know he's got me. He's going to protect me. He's going to make sure the protection is good. He's going to get on, on everyone. If they're not locked in, that is the guy my quarterback can trust. Nathan Bow has been uh, doing a lot of the snapping in this spring at center as Kramer throws incomplete. Uh, Gophers also like an older guy in Carter Shaw, who's a redshirt senior. Uh, he's in competition at center, too. So you're not going from a first or second round draft pick to a redshirt freshman or anything like that. You've got stability behind it. Without question. And the fact of the matter is the, the starting five that we see week one on the offensive line, just the way that football works, especially in the Big Ten, it won't be the same starting five week three, maybe not week eight, maybe not even week by, by week 13. Due to injuries, due to just adjustments that need to be made week in and week out, five is not enough in the Big Ten. You need eight, you need nine, you need a whole crop. So they're going to get all of these guys work, and hopefully by week three or week four, they figured out which five is best. It was Nathan Bow snapping at center here, but the defensive line continues to play well. They are, man. I mean, 
again, it's 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 hard to highlight because they're not actually sacking the uh, quarterback and and they kind of ease up around Ethan, but there are a lot of opportunities for the, that have been there for them to disrupt the quarterback. They look good, man. They look good. And going up against not just any offensive line, Minnesota's offensive line, that's special. Uh, third down here. and There's another sack right there, I believe. They're, yep. they're going to call that a sack right on cue. Thought maybe we were going to get our uh, first maroon flag of the day. Advance <laughs> the ball on third down, but a sack of Kramer. To see Kramer just winning with speed right there. Not a lot of hands, not a lot of anything. Just I am going to get off of this ball faster than you. You love to see it. And it was Jack Hawkinson that ended up getting home. It hasn't played in a, a real game yet. A guy that could see some field in the fall for the first time. The Maroon team getting it back with a chance to tie it early on in the third quarter. And here comes Kaliak Manasan, that offense. Spring football on the Big Ten Network is presented by USFL. The USFL continues tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Fox. All right, so saw a lot of work from Kaliak Manis in that first half. Said he might be done. Maybe we get more of a look at Drew Viado. Freshman quarterback, he's in behind center. Start this drive, and they let him throw it away, and it's right back into Elijah Spencer. New quarterback, same receiver, and Spencer picking up where he closed the first half. Elijah Spencer, another guy who we were highlighting earlier, Daniel Jackson, his ability to catch through contact. Elijah Spencer has firmly cemented himself as another prospect for that. Guys have been draped over him on every single one of these receptions, but he's consistently bringing it in. They go away from him this time as a real flag comes out as Newbin breaks out into the secondary. That is not the maroon or gold flag that could advance <laughs> the ball. That is a true penalty marker. In the area of holding, which is never good, if you're the maroon team, that is. Holding. Defense number eight. Ten yards out to the end of the run. Yeah, first down. Against the defense, though. It was holding. It was you know? holding. I was almost the there. <laughs> Let's see if we can spot him. What you're going to see is Jordan Newbin reading a zone read perfectly. He's looking front side. Look how much space there is. And he can plant that foot and get vertical before that end can close the gap. There's just a lot of muck to sift through there. But the ref saw something. And quite honestly, a lot of times when you see an offensive lineman on the ground like that, they don't want to be on the ground. Sometimes they got drugged to the ground with the defensive line. Leviato pulls it out of there, back Spencer's direction. And this guy's catching everything right now. He certainly is. And I'm also impressed with Viato. Like you mentioned, the true, true, friends, true freshman just arrived. But Elijah Spencer, sure-handed, looking off the DB there. Again, it's a tough thing to catch the ball knowing you are going to get hit immediately. But... Elijah Spencer's a guy you can trust. We got a, a great look at his eyes. Yeah. You, you're a former DB. What yes. would you have done if you saw those eyes? So what he did is what you could call bait, right? If you are a defensive back, watch very closely at the top of this route. He's getting vertical, and right here, he looks outside. Now, if you are not a disciplined cornerback, that'll be enough to get you. Playing cornerback is very hard, especially in tight man coverage. You are looking for any possible cue. Elijah Spencer is a veteran. He understands that. And he says, hey, if I can get an undisciplined guy here, I can get him off his ledge a little bit. Yeah, it's Newbin uh, back on the ground. Yeah, you, you talk about stemming and that sort of stuff and footwork, but that's an underrated part of that it position. Is. It's huge. And you know who really brought it to the forefront was Randy Moss. If you go back and just watch any Hall of Fame defensive back talk about covering Randy Moss, he manipulated you with his eyes because for a lot of inexperienced receivers, that's something that you can't control. Your eyes get big when the ball is coming. Those are little things, but a veteran like Elijah Spencer can sometimes use that to manipulate. The cornerback there was disciplined, but a lot of cornerbacks won't be. Joey Gerlock in on that tackle, make it fourth down. You, uh, you played right into the Gopher Viking crossover crowd right there. The Randy Moss I like reference. to please the people, Connor. What can I say? 
Well, what do you think? Um, I thought maybe they're going to send Viato back out into the field. They will kick the field goal. Dragon Kesic will replace Matthew Trickett, two-year starter at kicker for the Gophers. He's got a big left leg. And plenty of leg on that. Plenty, plenty, plenty. You are not lying about that leg. All right, so these are the guys to watch, both sides of the ball. Some transfers, but a couple of four-star guys. You, you get Jerome Williams this summer on the offensive line. Darius Taylor is already here, a guy that they brought in from Michigan. Jerome, the number two recruit in Minnesota. We were talking in the open about what back-to-back -back nine win seasons with bull wins can do. That's what it can do. It can keep the best home. That is a massive land. Then you have Darius Taylor, Sean Tyler, Corey Crooms. We've seen all these guys. Chris Collins, we haven't seen the UNC grad transfer, and I bet you he cannot wait for September 16th when they head back to Chapel Hill. Well, that'll be a, a fun headlining non-conference game on a Saturday in Chapel Hill. Two strong-armed quarterbacks. In yes, absolutely. Go Drake May against Kaliak Manis. That'll be fun. Can't wait for it. That will be. That will be a problem. I mean, it, it, again, if you look at this schedule, man, Thursday night under the lights, Matt Rule debut, new look Huskers. That's going to be a big one. And then you go out to UNC, not to mention the Big Ten schedule. The uh, lights will be bright this season. Viado is just playing for the Maroon team. Now he's the quarterback of the gold team. That's how it goes with the freshman quarterback. Coming up next, it's first look at Matt Rule's team. He says that they're playing a game. Everybody's live, <laughs> including the quarterbacks. We'll get you out to Lincoln next for Nebraska Spring Football on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And you know what? It, it kind of leans into there, there's two different types of spring balls. There's the Minneapolis spring ball right here with the Gophers where back-to-back -back nine win seasons. Yeah, we need to see what we got with some young guys, but we got enough experience to where we don't have to be live all the time every day. Nebraska is, hey, you got to show it to me. I, I've been here at Minnesota for some three win seasons. Hold on, see what we got here. Now, oh, Viato over the top and almost an interception for Coleman Bryson, but it's incomplete third down. He will definitely have to do 10 push ups the next time he gets to the sideline. He's tracking it, tracking it, tracking it, and that's very tough right there when the ball goes directly over your head. Wide receivers, that's a routine catch for them. It's, it's tricky for a DB. Oh, we got some action. We, we got a flag, but not a penalty flag. We've got the offensive flag that advances the ball, a maroon flag, special type of flag. So the maroon flag moves the offense forward 20 yards, and you only get to use it once, <laughs> and the offense will use it here. So that's why P.J. Fleck <laughs> is, is making notes. First down, that's the only one of maybe I, the season that we'll see that way. I just love... Even in as close to a real game as a spring game has been in Minnesota for a while, there got to be a fleck wrinkle in there. You know what I mean? There's got to be just a little sprinkle on top. No, uh, no mid-game concert. But <laughs> we do get flags. No, um, I, I believe it was two years ago. We had a three-point shootout between the uh, men's and women's basketball coach. There's always something. There's always something. But Connor, to, to the earlier point, the, the situation Nebraska was in is, is in is the situation I was in when I was here my sophomore year is, hey, guys, we won three games last year. Uh, you need to show it to me. We are live every day, quarterbacks included. I don't know who I'm going to play, and I don't even know if you're going to be a scholarship guy by the time this spring is over. So th there's, there's two types of, of, of spring ball. And timeout gold offense after they – Use that move forward flag, the maroon flag. As far as we know, those are the only true wrinkles today. We're going to see a lot of trick plays. <laughs> We're going to see those flags. As far as we know. As far as we know, if uh, PJ is, is in a great mood, maybe we'll see some more fun stuff. But he wasn't happy after that timeout. OK, there's, there's a little bit of a smile, somewhat. But uh, I, I don't think he was happy with that timeout that was just taken, or rather the reason why it had to be taken. I love that he pulled out the notebook and, <laughs> yeah. and made note. All right, gold team, they're out of the maroon flag. Yep, yep, just to make sure there's no funny stuff. Uh, Drew Viado on second down and 10 at quarterback, handing off to Grands, and he's not getting around the edge. Anthony Smith setting that edge. 
And second time we've seen him make a play at defensive line. And we saw him too when we were watching. We have another flag on the field. Let's see what this is about. Not a fleck flag, a, a referee flag. That flag is kind of gold tinted. It is. It is so. very confusing. I'm gonna be honest. On so conduct. pushing at the end, Defense, you saw number zero. Fifteen yards penalty. Becker added pushing the, end the pile. PJ now very vocally saying to the maroon sideline, "There's no room for that. Get him out." And that is why he is. Mm. Out came the sideline, and yeah, I understand things are fired up. You want to get up and celebrate. That is your teammate at the end of the day, and yeah, he is uh, currently on the sideline hearing hearing a lot of it. But no, there's no 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 place for that in spring game. That was uh, Smith on Grand there, and Grand gets the carry after the penalty sets up first down, and short gain with Smith now over on the sideline. Yes, uh, and again, guys are fired up. These are game reps. This is a defensive line who has a lot of spots up for grabs. Smith back in there. But there's just no place for when you're going up against your teammates. Before that play, I will say, which is what I believe you were getting at, he's had a heck of a day. He has. He's had a heck of a day. He's made himself known. You know, Smith you know, goes into the falls to looking for that first career sack, but Remember, that has been the headline for the defense. Get more pass rush, and he's a guy that factors into that on the edge. And back to the ground, tough yards for the goal team offense against that front with Smith and Henderson at nickel. Love Henderson, man, which leads to the conversation about the defensive backs. It, it's, it's fitting that the DBs and the D-line are kind of in a state of flux, not because of lack of talent, just because a lack of experience and who is going to take that role. A great DB unit helps out a defensive line unit. A defensive line unit that, that gets it done play after play, especially can pin their ears back on third down. That makes a DB feel great. They work in tandem. So we had a, a flagged first down. Then we saw a flagged first down. Now a third down again, and that is stopped up. That is Maverick Baranowski in dragging down the running back to make it fourth down. Huge play by Baranowski right there. You're, you're going to watch him here make the offensive lineman miss, and he just shoots the gap. He sees red, and he just goes for it. What a play back there. Baranowski was the young guy in, in the linebacker room a year ago. I'd expect him to have plenty of opportunity to, to become a starter before training camp's over with. And it comes from Florida. Mom was an athlete. Easy icebreaker with Emily Eman, our sideline reporter. <laughs> she was an outside hitter at UCF. <laughs> former volleyball player. So the field goal is good to make it a seven-point game. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. Well, that was the flashy start. We went into the locker room at 21-14. Defensive coaches will like that quarter better. Three points aside, seven point game going to the fourth. Start of the fourth quarter in the Maroon Gold game at Minnesota. Connor Onion, Brock Vereen, third member of our crew, Emily Eman on the sidelines. You've got former Gopher quarterback Tanner Morgan here. Tanner, it's the first time in the P.J. Fleck era that you are not behind center in a spring game. How does it feel to be on this side of the ball? Uh, it's awesome to watch it. Um, you know, super excited for all the guys out there. You know, I was here for a long time, so, you know, it's uh, fun to be able to come back as an alumni and watch the guys go out there and compete. You had six great years here. Looking back on your time, what memory sticks with you most? Yeah, you know, I think for, uh, for me, it's just the way that we flip the culture and uh, to just be a part of you know, building this program and then what's to come next and, and the way that it's going to continue to trend forward, it's going to be really fun to see. We've got some young talent, especially at the quarterback spot, Ethan Kaliak Manis. What can you say about his game that makes you confident that he's going to be a great quarterback? Yeah, he's got all the tools. I mean, uh, you know, he's been playing great out here. He's got a crazy arm strength. He's very athletic, great athlete. Um, and I think it's just exciting to see what he's going to do next year. And, you know, Cole Kramer's uh, Another guy who's played at a really high level, been around for a long time, and you know he's been having a great day so far. So those guys are great. They work really hard, and I'm um, excited to watch uh, you know both of those guys do their thing. And you know, really, really fun to see Ethan go out here and sling it. 
Ethan's talked a lot about how much he's learned from you, but I'm wondering what's something that you learned from him during your time? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, uh, you know, I learned a lot from him, just his um, ability to, to move on quickly from, from one thing to the next. I was always um, learning from him in that aspect, you know, especially from him at a young age, he was able to move on quickly from, you know, whether it was a good or a bad play. And I think that's something that you can really appreciate. Did we get a touchdown there? Got a great throw. I know, there we go. <laughs> Just as we're talking about the cues and we get Ethan throwing a tutty, that's awesome. Tanner, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, really appreciate it. Back to you guys. We think it was a touchdown. So, oh, yep, they officially they signaled it. They didn't confirm it. it. They, they, they signaled it. And of course, there's Elijah Spencer. It feels like he's caught 15 balls today. I'm not sure if we can get a replay because unfortunately the cameraman was toppled, but we're going to try. <laughs> well, let's let's take it through the entire drive. Kaliak Manis throwing to Corey Crooms out there on the sideline, making a diving catch. Kaliak Manis once again sitting back and just rifling in that dig perfectly on the hashes between Elijah Spencer. And here's what was called a touchdown. We're getting a look at it. One. Foot. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. a catch. That's that's good. The next level, baby. What a catch by him. Now we were talking chemistry earlier and how Daniel Jackson was the guy, but as Elijah Spencer sits here with nine receptions, 129 yards and a touchdown, chemistry will be no concern for this Gopher offense. I mean, that was as good of a drive as we, we we've seen today. We've seen it at all three levels between those two guys also. Kramer back on the field at quarterback, slings it in for a first down. Uh, we, we've seen it underneath. We saw that rocket of a slant route before halftime, and now a deep ball, too. He can make every throw. And right now, Elijah Spencer pushing himself into that MVP category, the Sid Hartman MVP, that is. Making a strong case, but with a tie game and 13 minutes left. And uh, it's interesting when the game gets close, the uh, original starters seem to find their way back onto the field when things get tight. Now here's Evans putting the juke move on again into the secondary. And he's got a big gainer again after his 70-yard touchdown earlier. He has as good of a 1-2 as you can see in a running back. And with a 1-2, you're going to see right here what I mean. Boop. And right there, he's by you and got the same guy again. The same guy, yeah. Coleman Bryson, unfortunately, is, has been the uh, victim of Zach Evans. But the beauty of it is, hey, that's my teammate. So if, if someone's going to one, two right past me, I'd rather be my teammate than somebody from Wisconsin or something. So, man, Zach, Zach Evans has, has shown quite a bit, and I'm excited for him. So, gold team on the march, trying to take the lead back again. Yeah, there's Baranowski again. He called his name a couple times in the second half, up from linebacker making the tackle. He was an early enrollee a year ago, made a push for, for one of those linebacker positions. There was just so much experience there that there really wasn't a place for him, but you better believe his name will be at the forefront. And, of course, we, we mentioned Jack Henderson. I'm telling you, that nickel position has him written all over it he can do a ton he just needs to be around the football he makes plays 163 tackles that's not by accident and the fake to Evans for Kramer and checks it down and Baranowski buzzes out there and makes another play fantastic play that, that is a sideline to sideline guy they love his athleticism and now we see why I mean, he just times it up perfectly. And a smart play by him, if you're wondering why that's not pass interference, because the ball is tipped, you can just fire. Once the ball is tipped, receivers do not have any protection, so you can just go ahead and hit him. Ernowski with, with a great couple, couple of a five-minute stretch here. They got him on the field a little bit in his red shirt year. He played the maximum four games to keep the red shirt. Yes. So they got him some experience. Uh, when, now it's when, full go for him. Yeah, when you're sitting behind Mariano Sori Marin, who may hear his name called next week, Braylon Oliver, who was an experienced guy who has now transferred away, it was just a tough room to crack. Uh, Brockington staying on his feet and taking tacklers with him. Uh, up the field for a first down for the gold team on third and ten. 
Lemecki saying it. Whoa, 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 Elijah. That MVP was mine before you had to go out there and start making all these catches. I love the catch, but I love the fight. He's staying up. Again, not the biggest guy, but scrappy is, is a, a good word, meaning I might be undersized, but I'm going to bring the physicality to you. I'm not going to wait for you to bring it to me. He's never going to forget. Lemecki Brockington will never forget his first career college touchdown pass. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good <laughs> or catch. 45-yard slant in a rivalry game. Talk Kidding about me? a uh, coming out party, right? They won the game against Wisconsin last year. Back in the ground with Evans. And, you know, we, we were talking earlier. Ethan Kalik Manis gets thrown into the fire due to injury with Tanner Morgan. We're going to be excited to see him with a full offseason. Same with Lemecki Brockington. He wasn't taking a lot of first-team reps. You had Altman Bell. You had a couple of other guys who have since transferred out. He's getting some number one team reps. It's going to go a long way for what is still a young guy. This can't be undervalued either. I know he's not working with Kaliak Manis today. He's been working with Kramer, but those two are in the same signing class, so they've been on campus the entire time together. Trust and chemistry. Uh, that pass knocked down. Yeah, so you got Spencer with 100 yards, Brockington with over 100 yards. It's it's going to be a tough tight decision, race. and uh, if one of them can snag a touchdown here in these final nine minutes, it, that may be the determining factor. And quarterback Victor Pless there finally saying, Lemecki, you've done enough. Someone's got to lock you down. Great coverage by him, able to disengage Brockington from the football. Pless going into his fourth year from Georgia. Definitely a candidate for that role opposite Justin Wally. And slant is intercepted. That is clean. Henderson away with it. It bounced off the chest of Quinton Redding, and Henderson on the carom intercepts it to give it back to the Maroon team. What a play, and way to be agile, and way to find the football. The ball gets tipped up into the air. You're going to see this slant here in the slot, number 81. That's Redding. Delayed. It's a good route. It's just better coverage, and that ball gets popped up. Henderson able to use those long arms and then roll over. That's the tough thing. A lot of times you see a guy dive for the ball, but then now did it hit the ground? You know the referee's going to challenge it. But to be able to grab that ball midair and then immediately roll, that's how you protect it. That's a veteran move right there. It was all gold team in the first quarter, and now the Maroon team can go down and take a lead. That's caught for a first down. Henderson on the... Interception to give him the ball back on Again, this hit and recovery. It's very tough right there. And now you roll. And now you roll. Don't leave any doubt that you made that reception. And as we figure out what the penalty is, we have another guy. Eligible receiver illegally down the field. Offense on the ground. number 76. Five-yard penalty remains first down. We had a legal Two man downfield. Play clock will be set to 40 seconds, please. It was on Reese Tripp. So Reese Tripp uh, downfield, that wipes off the brother-to-brother -brother connection. <laughs> There's uh, Dino Kaliak manis with the catch. Jordan Greenhow was the cornerback down there. He's able to walk to the sideline. Uh, hey, tomorrow, catch Big Ten Baseball. It's the Gophers and the Fighting Illini. Live coverage begins tomorrow, 2 Eastern on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Always fun covering John Anderson teams. Oh, it's never, never not interesting. Well, this is back out to Crooms along the sideline dancing and out across the 40 yard line. So Corey Crooms and Elijah Spencer first look for Gopher fans at those two guys today. Checking some boxes. A lot of those situations coming in man coverage as well. He gets man. He gets a great route there. Gets separation and Able to leave enough space to where he can dance a little bit on the sideline, get himself an extra four or five yards. That's that explosivity from the slot that gets me so excited, man. That is what they've been missing, and clearly they have it in spades this season. And again, if you just joined us, getting Tyler Johnson comparisons. So there's brother to brother. Ethan Dedino, a Kaliak man is first down. I know mom and dad are in here somewhere. Very excited, saying this is how we raised you. 
Ethan and Dino, again, that is not a big window, but the fact that Ethan has consistently hit that window since the first quarter, it's exciting, man. Those two are 16 months apart. They are not twins, but they did grow up in the same grade together and doing a lot of that in the backyard, back-to-back -back first downs for Ethan and Dino. Putting some pressure on the goal team here, saying if you are going to stick in man coverage, it is clear that Dino is going to get separation time and time again. Goal needs to change something up. Great route, great stem. And that one and a half yards of separation between receiver and DB is more than plenty for, for Big Bro to get you the football. And it pulls it, and it throws it to Kaliak Manis again, who slips the guy that's wearing the same jersey as him, plus so, different yeah. teams now. <laughs> this is the crossover period now. For the confusion, Jordan Greenhow had to go to the sideline. He was for the goal team. That cornerback room is kind of thin, so Victor Plus has to come and fill in and play for the for the bad guys uh, here. I was as confused as you were. That, that's one that no context college football picks up. <laughs> and you see your own guy trying to tackle you. That's going to end up on no context college football Plus later. And Victor Plus is now in the middle of the field, not sure which, which sideline he's supposed to go to. <laughs> not knowing he's part of a potentially viral moment. While we were away, the Maroon team moves it inside the red zone. Darius Taylor, four-star four freshman running back. Big crack on this play. Lowering the boom. He was in high school just a few months ago, but bam, right there. You would not know. Bringing the fight to you. I love it. He, he's, he's the perfect balance back. He has the speed to break away. He has the weight and the physicality to get it done between the tackles. The future is, is golden, if you will, for Darius Taylor. Well, today it's maroon. <laughs> okay, good point. I'll, I'll get all my colors mixed up. Uh, Taylor turning the legs in for a touchdown. The gem of the Gophers recruiting class, putting the Maroon team ahead. And I love that he's been able to show his entire skill set. Early on, it was speed. He was making guys miss in open space. He was trying to get outside. This entire drive has been him lowering his shoulder. Look, he gets stopped at the line of scrimmage right there, but he just turns those legs with some help of some offensive linemen, and he's able to get in. I, I am over the moon with this running back. Bam, right there. And the young kid who should still be in high school <laughs> bringing the physicality. And again, here's the run that set it up. Mm. And you hear the collective ooh echo throughout. That, that's, that's the only bad part about playing indoors is when you're a defender and they get the best of you. All of those oohs, they ring so loud. Connor. They're bouncing they, they, off they, the walls. Oh, it bounces off of everything. <laughs> Uh, Darius Taylor had uh, Jerome Williams join him in this class. So a couple of four-star guys. Uh, Darius Taylor had some other schools coming after him late. So is the game in recruiting. But he stayed loyal to the Gophers, and man, are they glad to have him. I tell you what, two things here. One, the fact that they kept Darius Taylor committed, the Michigan guy who had an offer from Michigan. They kept him committed, and Jerome Williams, a Minnesota recruit. Minnesota keeping top Minnesota recruits home has not always been the case. Clearly, there's a new precedent going forward. Michigan, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Iowa, Everywhere. all came in late. But the Gophers and P.J. Fleck were in on them early, and Darius Taylor stays true. That goes a long way, man. It goes a long way. And the way that recruiting works is... Darius Taylor comes here, he has success. You know what all the other Michigan recruits who he probably went to camp with or played with, you know what they're thinking? Hey, Darius is having the time of his life over in Minneapolis. Let me go see what there's about. It's, it's that easy. All it takes is one, and all of a sudden, you got two or three guys all from the same area because the guy that they all knew who was first had success. It sure helps that P.J. Fleck, uh, PJ Fleck coached in the state of Michigan. Uh, he knows it well. Western Michigan for a while. So now Kramer gets a chance to lead the gold team down. There's Brockington, an MVP candidate in this game, breaking away with a chance to tie the score. I don't know if there was a, a cap on how many trick plays you could run, but the gold team has so many. 
We'll see if we can get an angle from it. So watch the backfield. Watch what Cole Kramer does as his tackle goes in motion. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? And boom, you see Lamecki take off before the defense can react. A perfectly placed ball outside where Coleman Bryson, who is in position, but he's inside of him. So again, watch where Cole Kramer places this football. Safety's coming from the inside. I'm gonna force my receiver outside. He makes Bryson miss, and Lamecki Brockington once again says, uh-uh-uh, Elijah Spencer. That MVP is mine. Now, this looks like late season Lamecki Brockington. Closed the season really, really well. Final three games had a breakout. Well, this is the schedule that is coming up for Minnesota. The Thursday night game against Nebraska, and they resume Big Ten play against Northwestern. Then it starts in full with Iowa after that bye week. Big Ten the rest of the way after that. The Big Ten West is in such, such an interesting place. Don't get me wrong. The Big Ten West is always coming down to the last week. It's always chaos, but you have a new look Purdue, new quarterback, new head coach. New look Wisconsin, new head coach, new offense. They're going to be chucking the ball, coming from the air raid tree. Nebraska has a new coach, maybe a new quarterback. Can Illinois repeat the, the success of being last year's darling? Iowa got, got maybe the biggest transfers and all the big – the Big Ten West is madness, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The most confusing division in college football last Without year. Without question. I don't know why we even – predict it. We're not going to know until week 13. We're, we're just never going to know. Well, Brockington had that touchdown to help tie the game. Eight catches, 191 yards and a touchdown. Oh, they got to get him to uh, two bills. Got to. Got to get him to two bills. To say I had 200 yards in the spring game, that they got to if they can get this ball back and, and make sure this isn't the last possession, if they can get a third down stop, I promise you they won't let make you to get 200, to, 200 yards. Well, Spencer made the catch, and he got a, a DB down. Kerry Brown, who had a pick earlier. Walking a little gingerly. While uh, Brown goes off, a gold flag was used by the defense, which results in a loss of down. So this is going to be fourth and one. Oh. So Maroon <laughs> held on to it. That's how you up the stakes. Or gold held on to it, excuse me. Gold held on to it, and now it's fourth down and one instead of third down and one. And Maroon's going to go for it with Kaliak Manis at quarterback. And he hands off for Taylor, squeezing in there. And I don't think he got there. He didn't. He's short. So the use of that gold flag pays up big for the gold team. They're going to get it back in plus territory with a chance to win it. It looks like Tyler Stolsky, 44. Is he able to? Yeah, he is. The guard reaches him, but he's able to keep his balance and fight through. Look at him get just enough. I'll tell you, what a play. And of course, Joey Gerlock celebrating, throwing that fist up, helping him out. But what a tandem right there to fight through some six foot seven, 300 pound guy in front of you to still make that play. And Gerlock letting him know offense, go out there and win this thing. It looks like Goosby is going to play on both sides now. <laughs> these, so. these DBs don't know who to root for. <laughs> and. Just to make sure we didn't have that moment like we had earlier with Plus, he's wearing the penny now. Thank you. Thank you for making it clear. And that's the beauty of being the head coach. Uh, you get to decide who plays where sometimes in points of confusion. Now, now we're back to the action. Now you do have uh, jersey on jersey out on the perimeter. And as that goes up the middle, Baranowski saves a potential touchdown for Max Grands. Great play by Baranowski there, and definitely a touchdown saving tackle. Max Grant in that mix in the running back depth, but with that much space, he definitely has the speed to make a house call. Incredible play by Baranowski. And so it'll be second and short. 
That, that's Sean Tyler out there. Is that Sean Tyler out there playing corner? Is, <laughs> could it be? Uh, back with Grand, and he's near the first down line to gain. We have to apologize. Our, our rosters have become worthless since everyone's been. Everybody's <laughs> changing jerseys. numbers. I promise you guys, we're, we're doing our best here. <laughs> okay, so it is fourth down. They don't give him the spot. And we've got a field goal coming with inside a minute to go with a chance for the gold team to win it. Last year's spring game came down to a field goal as well. Maroon besting the gold team 19 to 16. Pressure is on once again. Clock winding down, building the moment. Music playing. <laughs> Well, this is the, the big leg lefty from 48 yards. And Dragon Kesic try to put the gold team ahead and right down the middle. The indoors, perfect conditions. That thing's good from like seven. That thing would still be going if that, if that big wall wasn't there. Beautiful form. He likes it from the moment he made contact. You're seeing a lot of a lot of kickers now that are in that 6-4 and up range because they just have that length and that leg. You go back to the 90s, every kicker was the smallest guy on the team. That's not the case. These kickers are jacked and they are tall and they got power. Maybe future Legatron of the Big Ten <laughs> right there. I mean, that's a great resume from, from what we've seen so far. It sure helps as the safety valve and tackling, too, when you've got six <laughs> you never know. kickers. You never know. we got about a half a minute here for Kaliak Manis. Try to lead the team down. And it goes to Elijah Spencer. And he's got a short gain. Great job by the defense keeping him in bounds. He was certainly sideline hunting. They did not allow it. And Spencer, who been going back and forth with Lamecki Brockington. Did we have a gold I think we, flag? I didn't see the gold flag come out, but they're moving forward 20 yards, so this must be the gold flag. I mean, three-point game, 30 seconds left. You got, you got to raise the stakes a little bit, right? And each team gets one gold flag per game. Actually, that would be the maroon flag. That would be the maroon flag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't get our flags mixed <laughs> if up. If there weren't enough colors. So automatic first down plus 20 yards. Kaliak Manis sideline shot. And Spencer couldn't reel that one in. Great throw by Kaliak Manis. Him and Spencer just weren't on the pay, on the same page at the right time. You're going to see the back shoulder. Elijah Spencer is just a second too late to read it right there. If he, if he can separate half a second before that ball is his, that comes with time, right? That back shoulder fade is one of the toughest things to throw. But if you can get it consistently, it's also the toughest thing to guard. They will develop their chemistry a little bit more, and they'll, they'll be on the same page next time. And Kaliak Manis is touched up. John Joyner got to the quarterback. Or did we have a timeout first or after? That's the question here. Let's I think this comes, place this comes after. Look at John Joyner. The Spring game MVP two years ago, making his presence felt once again. Now this play will count. This play will count. Okay, so will it count. is going to be a sack. And so, a little over 10 seconds to go. Jaw Joyner came alive down the stretch of last season. He's trying to ride that momentum as well. Did he make a game-saving play? And a third and 16. Already used the maroon flag to advance it. And to the sideline, Kaliak Manis is out of bounds. And it'll be fourth and short. And you got to either get a quick first down, then take an end zone shot, or take your end zone shot here. Or, or do you go for the tie? Tie it up and make it even more interesting. <laughs> they're not going for the win, they're going for the tie. All right, so does that mean we get co MVPs if we tie <laughs> Rockington and Spencer? There's about four or five candidates right now. They may have to cut that trophy up into a bunch of little pieces. From 46 for Kessich. And 
and he is good for both teams. And we are 10 seconds away from the rarest of spring game ties, but <laughs> P.J. Fleck has something in his pocket here. I think we're going to go two-point conversion overtime rules and settle this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't get enough. I don't care how much this situation has been manipulated. The fans are here. Let's just raise the stakes, baby. And so Kaliak, Manis, and the Maroon team offense will get the first chance at it. He'll head out there with Jordan Newbin as the running back. And then the ball will be at the three yard line. Corey Crooms in the slot. He was doing a lot of work there earlier in the red zone. So one shot at it. He's going to Spencer. Single coverage. And it's incomplete. Ryland Kelly in the back broke it up. And the gold team gets a stop on the two point play. Textbook play by Ryland Kelly. I mean, I mean, textbook a perfectly thrown ball a great route by Spencer you're always going to be a step behind when the ball is placed that well but man did he just play through the hands perfectly Th that ball gets there so quick or it takes so long to develop if it's thrown with a high arc if it's not a back shoulder you have no chance don't look for the ball just watch the hands when they form to the diamond swipe through great play by Kelly trick play to win it here yeah why not it is the gold team now uh, Reed Evans bounces outside looking for the win and a gold team winner in the spring game. Why not right <laughs> why not he had himself one heck of a day all the running backs did but that Evans able to seal the deal. That's on a day where Lemecki Brockington had the big day Evans with a two point conversion to win it after a touchdown earlier for Brock Vereen, former Gopher Connor Onion, Emily Eamon on our sidelines. We thank you for watching. Nebraska spring football is next. A trophy for the gold team here in Minneapolis.